Hey, G peeps. That's for gun people. Uh, let's see here. A note. Give me all of your 50s, 100s, and 20s. Why didn't this guy say 20s, 50s, and 100s and keep it right? Is that my ADD or would that be a normal note? Why does he start with 50s, then go to 100, then go back down to 20? Well, anyway, so we got a note here. Guy says, please. Look, he's a polite crook. Crooks can be polite. Not all crooks are impolite. I have a bomb, so please be, I think that's careful. I'm not sure. So a guy walks into a, a, guy walks into a bank and says, I have a bomb. That's the joke. Guy walks in a bar and says, okay, here. Let's play the video here real quick. We'll show a little bit of kind of what happened, then I'll show a better footage of uh saying he had a bomb and that he was robbing the bank. Um, my understanding is that he did not get any proceeds. He left without the money. He didn't get the uh, money. There was a detailed description put out of the subject, uh, and he was located a block away uh, near the barber shop at 1530 Walton. Okay. Does it look like he's got a bomb? I mean, unless he's got it, he calls what's in his pants a bomb to the ladies. He had armed himself in the barber shop with a straight edge razor. Okay. And after a period of time, he came out. He took his shirt off and he came out. And uh, he was challenged by the officers. It does look like he's holding street. something in his and hand. At some though. point during that confrontation, he did raise his hand with the straight edge razor in it, and he was shot. One officer fired, we believe, two shots. Okay. The subject is a male Hispanic. I do not have his identity at this time. Well, that's why you shot him, because he was Hispanic. Because that's important, what race a guy is. It's not important on what the facts are. It's more important on what race they are. Freaking liberals. All right, so here's the shooting where they shoot the guy. This is your shooter if you want to watch him. Okay, so now I'll tell you kind of what I see here, um, and we're going to go back to this, wherever it starts here. Alright, again, use of force, number of officers, is a suspect armed, how much in danger are the cops? Alright, this woman is probably in the worst position because she seems way too close to a guy with a knife. Now, maybe the video is playing tricks, but this officer seems at a decent distance. This guy is at the left, so he could probably be a little bit closer. The guy would have to turn to him. But in all studies, if you're closer than 21 feet, 7 meters, whatever you want to use, uh, a guy can get to you and stab you before you can get a round off. And even if you get a round off, you're probably still going to get stabbed. So these guys, are, are they vulnerable to being hurt? Sure they are. Is there fear? Yeah, the guy just robbed a bank, said he had a bomb, even though he lied. I mean, you, 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 some of these guys lie, some of them don't. Maybe maybe put a bomb in there. Again, you can't shoot people because of a bunch of maybes, but that the maybes can help distinguish on what frame of mind you were in. So the officer's frame of mind was, we got a guy who walked into a store, said he was going to steal money. He gave him a note. He said, please, in a note, which was very nice. And he said he had a bomb. And then he left without the money. So... Obviously, he's kind of a failure as a bank robber in several areas, besides not putting his 20s, 50 cent hundreds right. But, I mean, he left without the money. Okay, so now he, he now they say he armed himself with a straight razor. He has a knife. Okay, maybe we have mental issues. The guy doesn't look like a threat. He doesn't look like he's like in super good shape. He doesn't look like a youngster that's going to leap over tall buildings in a single bounce. Doesn't make him less of a threat. A kid can kill you just as quick as an old person. But, I mean, you know, again, there's other factors when you're sizing up somebody. These cops are sizing up. How much of a threat is this guy? Do I think this guy should have shot him? No, I don't. Uh, I, I think this is a... Is, do I think the shooting will be ruled justified? Absolutely. It's going to be just... People will be like, you're just a fit of the cops. You just want... Look, I'm telling you. There was a threat. There was an immediate threat. The guy just committed a violent felony, threatening to bomb and blow up and kill people. And now he's, he, he's talking to the cops. He did not drop his weapon. He didn't get down on his knees. He didn't give up. He wasn't putting his hands out. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I think this was a lawfully legal shoot. Morally, for me, and everybody's moral compass is different, this was not a good shoot. I don't think the guy needed to be shot. I think they could have gave it more time. I think they could have waited for him to be more aggressive. 
I think they could. Some, I know there are going to be cops out there, oh, you just want to get stabbed and you weren't. Oh, man, I've been to plenty of calls with knives and guns. And look, like I said, I've said this, I don't know how many times. I could have shot, well, probably 1,500 people in my career that I would have been legally, like this guy is, legally authorized, could have killed him, no questions asked. I would have been fine. Morally, I didn't shoot anybody. Because I just didn't think I needed to. Now, some people will say, you know what, well, you probably should have, or maybe you took a risk and you were just lucky. Whatever. I mean, I, you, everybody's got to live with their own shooting. Do I have a problem shooting somebody? No. I, I'm absolutely, easily morally justified to shoot somebody if I perceive them as a threat or I think they're going to kill me or hurt me. Absolutely, I'll shoot them in two seconds flat. That's not the issue. The issue is, when you're out there, making an arrest on a guy that's standing there with his hands down the side, doesn't look aggressive. Yeah, he raised his hand. Yeah, it didn't look aggressive. He didn't look like he stepped, stepped forward. Watch the suspect's movements right before he shot and tell me where you see aggressive, threatening, quick movements that deserve shooting. His hands up. He's talking with his hands. A little step there. He's got his hand on the car and he shot. I didn't see anything that caused him to be shot. Um, he was doing the same thing he was done five minutes ago. Why didn't they shoot him five minutes ago? If he was authorized to shoot when he shot, why didn't he shoot five minutes ago? Well, Rick, oh, he, he took a step toward the cop, and that was enough. I, I, I agree with you. It's enough legally. Personally, I think it's bullshit. I don't think the guy should have been shot and killed over this. Was he a bad guy? Was he having, well, you know, did he, did he have cancer? Was he trying, you know, I, I mean, somebody who's stealing food for their kid... I think it's different than somebody who's stealing, you know, he's got money in his pocket and he's being a bum. Now, some people are going to disagree with that and say, you know what, stealing, stealing, it doesn't matter. They all deserve the same punishment. I, I don't necessarily agree with that. But anyway, that's me personally. Uh, I want you to watch the reaction of the cops afterwards now. So now the cops are sitting here. The shooting takes place. And I'm going to pause it. So we have one, two, three, four people with their guns out pointed as suspects. So we obviously have numbers, we have superior weapons, we have a suspect only armed with a knife and we got guns, we have distance, so we have reaction time. All those things, was the shot justified? If you notice this cop back here in the back, his gun is by his leg on his side. Why? Why, why didn't he point at the guy? Because he's got a barrier of a car between him. He doesn't feel as threatened, and he's not pointing his gun. Probably a smart move. Why take a chance at accidental discharge? The guy's already got four guns on it. Is my extra gun going to really make a difference? So, you know what? Who's the guy most exposed and in a most immediate threat? The guy that's shot. That's going to work in his favor. This guy's behind a car. This guy doesn't have anything between him and a suspect. This woman's off at an angle. The suspect isn't talking to her. He's communicating with one of these guys. He's looking this way. And this guy over here is probably in the least jeopardy because he's got distance and he's on a side. Doesn't mean that the guy couldn't target any one of them and get to him. But when you're looking at this, the guy in the most threat is probably the guy that shot right here. All right, so. Did you notice the cop took a step back before he shot? That's going to work in his favor. I'll move it back a little bit. Watch him take a step right before he shoots. He takes a step back. There goes that step. People be like, well, he was just getting a better stance so he could kill him because he's a jack leg, boot leg, want to kill Nazi. Well, no. In his mind, there was a threat of some sort that caused him to move back. Watch his feet again right before he shoots. Step back. So when somebody's asking him or he's looking at this, they're going to say, why did you step back? Because the suspect stepped forward. I know the 21 feet rule. He closed the distance. I didn't know what was behind me. We had already talked to him. We gave him plenty of opportunities, and I thought he was a threat, so I fired. And that's going to be his story, and he's going to stick to it, whether he's liar, liar, pants on fire, or whatever. He's going to stick to that story because it's his life and his, you know, it's his career. He, he could go to jail. He could go to prison. He ain't changing that story. So, I, well, he's just going to lie and make it up. He may, but I guarantee you that's going to be a story and he's sticking to it. So, I want you to notice how quick this woman puts her gun away after shooting. 
goes for a radio. This guy goes for a radio. But this guy and this guy and this guy keep their gun on a suspect. And I talk about this warrior mentality, frame of mind. What's your mindset? The threat is not over because the guy's on the ground. And the other cops pointing their guns only reaffirm that fact that there is still a threat because it's an armed guy. Now they're going to go over there, take the knife away, or handcuff him, or let him bleed out if he doesn't drop the knife. And people will say, why didn't they give him a, a, a medical aid? Why didn't they just shoot the knife out of his hand? Why didn't they shoot his pinky toe? Whatever. Look, I'm just kind of going over what the frame of mind of the officers are. Watch the suspects of the officers. So her gun, look at her. She is so nervous. She starts patting her legs and drying her hands. This is what's called decision process. She doesn't really know what to do, so she's just doing something. She doesn't think there's a threat. She just saw somebody shot in front of her, and she kind of went into a little bit of a panic mode. Rick, you're just picking on her because she's a woman. Well, you know what? It is what it is. She went into a panic mode, put her gun away, and started tapping her freaking legs. Why? To me, that goes into training and mindset. The shooter didn't drop his gun. The guy behind him still has his gun. And the officer over here still has his gun on the suspects. The only one that decided this would be a good time to drop, put my gun away and dr adjust my pants and wipe my hands was a female officer, which was probably hard to fill a quota. I know. I'm a sexist. It, you know, they're just as good as men, blah, 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 blah. Let's watch her hands. Shooting. Gun goes away. Oh, shit. What do I do? What? Oh, no. Uh, uh, let me check. Oh, let me get on the radio. Shit. Shit, I don't know what to do. Let me. <laughs> yeah, whatever. All right, that's my take. Well, in that there. <laughs>